Hey, welcome to part 2 of this series. In this part we're going to take a look at how I created the low poly for this model and also how we did the base. So to prepare for the low poly, I'm going to take the high and I'm going to merge it all together and then I'm going to decimate it. And once we've done that, I'm going to put it in Maya. I'm going to make a new group that's called the bake group. And here I'm going to put the decimated high and I'm going to be putting the low poly in here. I also want to put the high group in a layer so we can easily hide it whenever we need to. And to start off the low, I just took the first subdivision that we had in ZBrush. Because remember, we want to make sure to keep it nice and clean so we could use that as a base. And then of course we have to come in and do some manual editing, like getting rid of some edges and moving stuff around. So after putting that loop, I'm just going to select those words and push them out to match the shape of the eye. One thing that we want to avoid is all this overlapping geo, so I'm just going to delete it. Because this will be more difficult to skin. So now that we have a hole in its place, I'm just going to go in with the retopology tools. I'm going to start filling up that hole. So I want to merge everything together now. I also want to be sure to go over the edges and make sure they align, as this first subdivision isn't going to align perfectly. And here I'm just putting in some extra geometry and triangulating it to match the shape better. I'm also spending some time putting in some extra edges to help with the shading. But later we'll see which edges we'll keep and which ones we'll change to hard edges instead. So here I'm going in and I'm starting to put my first hard edges. One thing to note that's important if you use a hard edge you gotta split the UVs on that hard edge. And after I've put all my hard edges and the shading is looking good, it's time to work on the UVs. So to start off, we just select all faces and we do a quick projection. Then we go ahead and select the hard edges using a script and then we put a seam on those hard edges. And then we can unfold that and then we get the base for our UVs. So now it's just a matter of going into your UVs and looking what unwrapped well. If something didn't unwrap well, we can go in and put an extra seam or an extra hard edge as well if we need to. I also went in Photoshop to make a checker with arrows, so I can check the directionality as well of the UVs. So now here's one of the most important parts of UVs, I want to go ahead and make sure they're straight. So I just straighten one out, then I smooth that, then I take the another edge, I straighten that out. And then we can just unfold that in one direction. Then we just take the ends and we pull that so it's straight. And we take the inverted polys and we unfold that in one direction. And then I redo that on the other pieces. The reason why I want them to be nice and straight is so when we texture, we have the leather details going nice and straight. And then it's just a matter of taking your UV islands and rotating them until they align nicely with the arrows. Notice how I'm all putting them on the left side. I'm not going to use the whole square. 
so we can use a non-uniform texture size. This will just save a little bit on resources for texture size. I'm also gonna go in and give the buckle some UVs. And remember, we already prepared the low poly when we were creating the high poly. So I just took this straight from ZBrush. And now we just have to put the UVs together. So now mom is set, I'm gonna start setting up the bake by creating a bake group. And I'm creating three bake groups for all the groups. The ladder, the buckle, and the little holder that goes through the buckle and the ladder. And I'm importing the low polys that we did in Maya. And also putting the high polys in the high group from ZBrush. So now we just have to set up a name for our bake. And we can hit the P to preview our bake. I'm going to set up another bake and it's going to be a JPEG bake. And it's going to be a bake that we use inside Maya. So after baking that, we can go ahead and we can set our normal map in Maya. And you can see that's going to look really strange because we don't have it on raw yet. So we're going to go ahead and set that on raw. Now you can see we have a proper looking bake. I'm also adding an extra vertex so we have something to skin that little buckle thing to. Now with the bake in Maya, we can go ahead and pay close attention to the seams and move them up or down if they're needed to. And then we keep going back and forward between Mama set baking and Maya and checking out the bake till we get something that we like. And since we're going to use a non uniform texture, we have to stretch the UVs to fit all the way in the one to one. Now it's just a matter of setting up our final bake to use a substance painter. One thing I forgot to mention, in your high poly you want to be sure that each element, so let's say uh, the leather top layer is going to have its own poly color. And then a different element is going to have a different color, so we can use that to select different elements and substance paint. It. As this is the vertex color map that we baked in Marmoset, that we will use as an ID map in substance paint. It. 